And now, ladies and gentlemen, Rand the Man and Donna Natrix as Caesar and Ethel Jacks in The Honeymoon is Over. The Jacks have retired, and as usual, Mrs. Jacks tosses recklessly while her husband Caesar's insomnia extraordinary presents this audible testimony at his constant wakefulness. Let's listen in. What is he doing? Caesar! Caesar, what's the matter with you? You're making the most frightful noises. What? what? What's the matter, Ethel? Are you in pain? I've got a terrible headache. Haven't slept a wink. You've been snoring like a banshee. Shh. Oh, my headaches. You wouldn't have such a headache if you didn't take so many cocktails before dinner. Why do you do that, Caesar? Always, always do it. Why? No good to eat on an empty stomach. Put out the lights, Ethel. The lights are out. How would you know anyway with that sleep shade on? Well, something's flashing in my head. Oh. Well, take an aspirin. Okay. Oh, feels better already. How can you chew things like that? Wash it down with something, Caesar. All right. Caesar Jackson, you're washing it down with bourbon. Oh, you lied to me. You got the lights on. Yes, and I'm going to keep them on. Sit up. I want to talk to you. Please, Ethel. I can't sit up. My head's going to fall off. Why do you always have to talk in the middle of the night? When else can I talk to you? You come home for your dinner, you bury your head in the newspaper, and I never get a word out of you. And then you tell me that you have to go to bed early because you have insomnia. Well, I have. Takes me hours to fall asleep. It took all of 30 seconds tonight. Well, this was a good night. Good night. (laughs) Caesar! Caesar! Caesar, come on. I went over to see the Marvin's new baby this evening. It's a beautiful child. Did you know their first one is over a year old? Oh, I hope so. It's been walking since he was eight months old. Must be awful tired. I am too. Oh, children are such a blessing, Caesar. Uh Yeah. It's so wonderful to watch them grow up. I'd be surprised at how many childless couples are adopting children. How about another aspirin? Boy, oh, I got a headache. Caesar, don't you wish for a patter of tiny feet around the house? No, I don't, Ethel. Children are wonderful, all right, but you have to be able to afford them. All this talk of adopting... (laughs) What the devil is that? What's what? That. Put the lights on. Caesar! Don't tell me you went out and... Oh, it's only a dog, silly. I guess it's a little puppy. A dog? Where's the aspirin? What'd you get a dog for? Oh, now don't get hysterical, Caesar. Where is that little beast? I can hear it, but I can't see it. Oh, he's right over there on your dresser. I put him in your shirt drawer. You put him in there with my shirts? Oh, we won't suffocate. The drawer's open. Ethel, you know I'm allergic to dog hair. Gives me sinus trouble. Where's those aspirin? Oh, you're just a big hypochondriac, Caesar Jax. You imagine those allergies like you imagine your insomnia. I tell you, I'm allergic to dogs. They make me... (coughs) See? Get rid of that thing. He'll whine all night and keep me awake. The man said he'll keep quiet if you give him one of those worm pills. Well, where are they? They're on the night table by your bed. How do you give a dog a... Where? They're on the night table by your bed. There's nothing here but the aspirins. The aspirins are in the medicine cabinet. How can they be in the med... Ethel, what have I been eating? No wonder my headache won't go away. Why do you do these things to me? Send for a doctor. Oh, don't carry on, Caesar. They're good for dogs. They won't hurt you. Now go to sleep. Go to sleep, she tells me. Here I am dying from dog poisoning. My... Oh, my head is splitting. You know I'm allergic to dogs. Hide the aspirin and make me... Ah, shut up! Little beast. I don't know. I get up so early, I'll never get another wink of sleep. Not as long as... As long as... Caesar! Caesar! I can see how much sleep I'm going to get tonight. We're going to have to get rid of that puppy. Oh, now you're talking. I want you to take him down to the dog pound. Okay, I'll do it on my way to work. Oh, no, no, you can't. You go in the opposite direction. I'll go out of my way. Oh, you say you will, but you won't. Come on, get out of bed and do him now. What? Go on, get up. Take the puppy to the dog pound. Ethel, are you out of your mind? It's after two in the morning. They're open all night, Caesar. Go on, get up and take him. I'd never heard of such a thing. You know, I went to bed with a splitting headache. I had to take a dozen worm pills to fall asleep. Oh, you take the dog to the dog pound quick enough if Gloria Gooseby asked you. How do you always manage to work the conversation around Gloria Gooseby? Shut up! Well, if you wouldn't shout so much, maybe the puppy would be able to sleep. Ah, what's the use? Good night. I thought it'd be nice to have a little dog. 
Especially when we move into our new apartment. Still got a year to go on this one. Our lease expires on Friday, Caesar. I renewed it yesterday. Oh, I cancelled it this morning. Amos is raffling off the apartment for me. That's a good idea. Amos is what? Amos has sold 500 tickets for $2 apiece, and the winner moves into our apartment tomorrow. Ethel, no! I... Ah, uh, I don't believe it! We'll be on the streets! Amos says he'll find us a new place in a jiffy. A jiffy? Haven't you heard there's a housing shortage? Where would he find a place? Well, I bought a ticket myself, Caesar. It's a wonderful chance. It's a lovely three-room apartment, large kitchen, big garden. Oh, it's worth two dollars and we might get it. Get it? We got it now! I know. But even if we don't win, we get the thousand dollar payments collected from the other tickets. But Ethel, I gave the landlord a twelve hundred dollar bonus to renew the lease, and now I'm out two hundred dollars, and I've got no place to live. Sounds like pretty poor business to me. Why do you make such deals? The problem with you, Caesar, is that you're too conservative. Ah, oh, Ethel. If you thought up some of the deals that Amos has, we might be living as nicely as he does. You know, he's been living at the Belmont Hotel for years. Ethel, he sleeps on a billiard table. Look out, where's my slippers? What are you gonna do? Let me get to that phone. I'll see. Put on the light. The lights are on now. Open your eyes. Oh, where's the phone? I know it's going to ring, and I want to be ready when it does. Hello? Hello? Drop dead. Wait a minute. That wasn't Amos. I'll get it. I'll get it. Amos? Hey, Jacko. What are you doing up this time of night? Packing, Amos. We're moving, haven't you heard? Well, aren't you going to invite me in? I'd like to look the place over. You mean? Yep. I won the raffle. Dondest luck I ever saw. Who drew the ticket, Amos? Fair and square. I wouldn't take a chance having some phony draw it, so I drew it myself. What a coincidence. Get out of here! What's the matter with you, Jocko? You got a thousand dollars coming, and if you're worried about a place to live, I'll rent you the garage. You haven't got a car anymore. Get out I... before I hit you with a cleaver. Oh, Jocko, you don't got to be so sore. You better give that money back to the people you sold tickets to, or you're going to have a lot of explaining to do. Not me, brother. You'll have to do the explaining. I'll tell him you won. Good night, Jocko. That guy will wind up in a chain gang well, of shirts. Well, was it Amos? Who won? I did. Now at last I can go to sleep in my own bed without worrying. Oh, no, you can't. The dog's in there. Ah, oh, nuts. I'll sleep in the garage. Good night, Caesar. Good night, Ethel. <laughs> Come tune in to Ran the Man on Spreaker.com next Friday for the next episode of Mr. and Mrs. Jacks, or you can find us on YouTube.